Welcome to the stream, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Iggy Kid on Twitch.tv. And now, introducing your host from the 16-bit afterlife, weighing in at 273 kilobytes, assisted by the hands and voice of her mortal vessel, Iggy Kid. They are the ghost in the machine. The Electric Spectre! El Phantasma de la Electricida! Lee! Oh! Hello? Hello? Hello! There it is. Okay. Ah, I have a return. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. The cable's getting a little mixed up. Uh, yeah. Everything's going pretty good. So let's just get into the game. You know? I have a smoothie here, which it's got this, like, um... Bartholum. Right. Oh yeah, I named this one Sandwich, because it's, uh... It was like an Arby's tie-in thing, where they were, like, you could have a little sandwich friend who flies around with you. It's... it's pretty cute. Um... But, you know, nothing that special. Okay, so I cleared the Iron Whale. Don't have the Knuckles yet, so I gotta go heal that. Uh, let's start out doing the Hall of Champions. We'll just get that out of the way. This is the Hall of Champions, a living monument to the founders of this great land. Admission for one, that will be 5,000 gold, please. Woo. Ah, oh, well, I understand. The arts can't expect real support for peasants. I remember it being cheaper than that. We will come back to that. Uh, oh, well, speaking of money, here we are. Ooh, yeah. That's what I want. That's what I want. Whoops. That's not what I want. Ah! Now I want to be on that side. Ah, good thing. No. No! No! Oh my god! Hold on. Nope, this isn't an emulation. Oh my god. That was awful. Oh, I did so bad. Maybe that wasn't the best thing to uh, do as a warm up. Got all that stuff at least. But, yeah. Over. Ah. And bam. Okay. Weird out that room. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Oh, crap, crap. Right. Okay, well, I ended up with a decent. 4,000 gold, so that's not terrible. Yeah, still alive. Um, okay, so yeah, let's go to the lair of the moment. The Lost City. And, uh, we will. Quarry after no, no, this is... Oh. Man, I should change my... Okay, there it is. Change my thing because it keeps wasting my stuff. I don't want to waste all of my magic. Oh, come on. Shh, threw that right off the edge. No, this is definitely not my first time. I was one of the original backers um, for Shovel Knight, so I've played it a ton of times. But it has been a while. Yep, yep. We'll get yellow. No. I'll take it. I'll take yellow, but that's not really my favorite. Ooh. I'm sure there's some good stuff in these ones. Ooh. There was a try though. Hello. Uh, okay. What? Now. Uh. Yeah, I didn't finish King of Cards just because I got distracted when I was doing uh, my run of that, but 
I do like that one as well. And I finished uh, the Plague Knight and the Spectre Knight. Plague of, Plague of Shadows. Spectre of Torment, I think. Um, which, I believe, Spectre is my favorite of them. Because it's just it's so good. They take everything that was great about Shovel Knight and really just amp it up. Yeah, I would, I totally would want to. I love a game with, like, a card system and everything, and, like, the cards are not even actually, like, required to beat it, but it's like, of course you can do it. It's like half the point. Come on now. Anybody who's like, oh, they added a card system, you're a wiener. Stop it. You're missing out on good gameplay. Just because yo, you think you don't want to learn a few rules for a card game. Come on. Some of the best games out there are card games. Should give them a shot. Uh, speaking of tabletop games, I didn't realize. I thought uh, for this guy you had to do the like go shield. Your uh, shovel bounce on him. I didn't realize you could just jump, jump on his uh, speed parts. Ah, no, no. Okay. Whoop, whoop. Uh, but yeah. Speaking of that stuff, uh oh, he's getting away from me. No. Uh, I'm going to be participating in the Break My Game Tabletop Design Jam, which is going from November 3rd to November 19th. Um, so it's starting pretty soon. Right now, they've been doing the vote. Because the idea is that uh, they give us two random mechanics, and then we vote on a uh, third mechanic. But the way they're doing the vote is, like, pretty chaotic. It's a uh, it's it's a straightforward vote, but then the um, they're adding modifiers that we're voting for every day, and the modifiers have just gone completely out of control. They're just absolutely ridiculous to the point where the votes hardly even matter at this point. It's effectively like randomized with slight agency. Which, as I said in the chat, I'm like, this is really just, like, a great lesson in what happens when you just add a ton of mechanics to something without actually playtesting them, because, yeah, a lot of them are pretty easily broken and ended up being, like, it's usually pretty obvious which one is the best one of the three that they've proposed. Yeah, I mean, it's still open, like, it, up until the third. You know, and they have tons of resources for how to prototype um, games to like play test them online. So if you're interested, you know it's free to join. Uh, you just gotta go get a ticket, and you can vote in the Discord server. And they do like regular like play test stuff. So if you like play testing, um, then. Totally, they're always looking for more playtesters for people's games. That's it's called the server is called Break My Game because that's the idea is that it's a server for playtesting. Oop! Ah, dang it! For uh, playtesting games, which I participated in some. I was gonna be in their first game jam back in uh, 2021. If this is like their second year anniversary of that one, but uh, halfway through the jam, I found out that my computer was about to explode, which I have mentioned on here before, which, yeah, when I was, ah, crap, when I was streaming uh, Oath all the time, that's what did that, although having playtested, recently having playtested some stuff in Tabletop Simulator, there are ways... Um, there are ways to make it a lot more viable. Like, 
so that I don't have to have such a ridiculous PC. Basically, I just needed to change my settings to be less ridiculous. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna get that last one. I'm not gonna risk it a third time. Not that much of a fool. But uh, yeah, I started designing a game that I kind of want to go back and maybe try and work. I only got like one playtest of it in before, and so it was still very rough. It was not great. It had some interesting ideas, I think, though, so. Would have been pretty neat, if you ask me. Oh. Ah. Oh. Okay. Oh, that bubbly lava. Ooh, I love how the lava looks in this game. Looks like a royal in soup. Make some soup from scratch sometime soon. Haven't done it in quite a while, but I do always love the results. Uh, in the village or out in the field, I have all the deals. You're not gonna believe what I just found in this chest. Want to see? Oh uh, yeah, there's the knuckles. Dust knuckles. Oh. That's one of my favorites. It feels so satisfying. Of course, the other being the Infina Dagger. So it just zips you right across the screen so fast. Anything that improves your movement, you know, adds to your, uh, your set of movement stuff. Your move set. I like it. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think some people maybe have the wrong idea of game jams in general, and this game jam in particular, because I see a lot of people talking about how they want to make sure that their game is, like, really good and viable, and it's like, the point of a game jam is to, like, experiment, and, like, more than anything, it's just to hone your production capabilities. Like, it's, it's to teach you how to prototype and iterate really fast and efficiently. It's not really meant necessarily to give you a game you're gonna sell, you know? And, uh, yeah, I would say, for sure, a game jam is a great place to start if you want to start designing games. Because there's, like, no... Like, there's pressure because there's a pretty tight deadline, but there's, like... It's good to... To hold yourself to a really tight deadline sometimes. Because, it, like, it's very easy, especially if you are new to some kind of art form, uh, to just take forever on your first work, because you don't... For, for a variety of reasons, right? It's, like, uh, partially because you're still learning a lot of stuff. Like, part of it is you want it to be really good, so you take a lot longer than you actually need to. But then the other part of it is that you don't really know how to actually do the thing, right? Like, it's probably more difficult than you realize. Oh, nope, not gonna get that. This is a 100% run, so it's fine. Uh, but yeah, like, the whole idea behind the game jam <coughs> is that it forces you to work quickly. And it forces you to make decisions quickly, because there are certainly a lot of people, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if you are looking to be a professional in any way, or at the very least if you are looking to, you know, just learn how to make stuff faster. Because if you can make stuff fast, then you can make more stuff, and that's always cool. So like, yeah, it just forces you to understand like what decisions are worth like laboring over, and taking your time on, and which which ones you can just make a snap decision about. Which applies to tabletop games in a lot of ways, right? Because there's the whole thing of people not taking their turn. And the reality is it's because... Um, it's not that people make bad decisions, it's just that they don't understand which decisions should really take priority in their mind. Okay. What? No, that's... Ding, ding. Oh, okay, careful. Stuff and die. 
sure he would give me a decent amount. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Being able to work quickly. It's not always ideal, but, aw, oh, man, I didn't get the... Well, that's... Um... Yeah, it just forces you to make decisions more efficiently. Not necessarily better decisions, just more efficient decisions. Which is very helpful to have, so that when you are working on a longer project... ...and you are spending more time, you're spending it on stuff that actually needs that much time, and not just stuff that, you know, you don't, uh, know how to work through. It's very handy. Uh, I've been thinking about... I've been thinking some about turn-based JRPG design lately, and it seems to be a tricky space to design in. There's a lot of repetition and not a lot of balance in some of the largest franchises in the genre. Yeah, well, okay. I could go off for a long time about balance and imbalance. I, like, genuinely, it is one of the things with in-game design that I'm most fascinated and most passionate about is, uh, balance, right? Uh, the larger thing being, I don't, I think we overvalue, uh, balance. Like, as gamers, like, the biggest complaint anybody will have is like, this isn't balance, but it's like, why is that suddenly a bad thing? Like, yeah, okay, it doesn't feel fair, but it's like, maybe that was the point. Maybe it wasn't supposed to feel fair. Or maybe it's more balanced than you realize you're just not noticing it. But, uh, yeah, I don't think... I don't think balance is necessarily the ultimate goal of a lot of games. Nor do I think it should be. And in fact, many of my favorite games, the ones that I find most exciting and interesting, are ones that are heavily imbalanced. God damn it! Ah, that's a tricky spot. Um, but yeah, repetition, I will say that's why I don't personally play many turn-based RPGs, because I find them incredibly tedious. Like, I played Pokemon when I was a kid, and when I played the first time, I was like, this is great, it's Pokemons, right? But as an adult playing Pokemon, I'm like, this is so incredibly boring. Like, they've kind of improved it lately, but yeah, Pokemon is just... I don't know, man. I'm... And like, there are some that add some things, but yeah, turn-based RPGs just as a genre, I can't get behind because they're just so slow. In a multiplayer game, is about fairness, uh, the overpowered player having fun at the suspense of weaker players. But in a single player game, it's about switching repetition, find the solution, then repeat it until the game ends as bad gameplay. Yeah, well that's the thing. The, I, I think most J turn-based RPGs I find incredibly dull because uh, of dominant strategy, right? Like any time, I can kind of just brute force my way through without ever having to, you know, they, they give you all these spells and strategies and all this, all these items, and it's like, ooh, you can strategize, but it's like, why would I? I don't need to, because I can just hit the standard attack, or like whatever strongest attack I have, and just spam that and win. Or like, you know, use type advantages if it's Pokemon. Exactly. And that, like, that's pretty much every JRPG that I've come into contact with. Even the ones that have like pretty good storytelling and stuff like Chrono Trigger, it's like, I didn't get challenged at any point in the game, really. Like I never felt that. But then I will also say in a multiplayer game, saying it's about fairness, again, A, that assumes that the, the person who is overpowered knows how to utilize it. B, that's assuming that the weaker players can't come back. Obviously, if there is such a, a massive gap, right, it'll be a problem. If they're below the Pareto frontier where they are uh, too weak to even to even match up against anybody versus, like, the most powerful guy, obviously that's going to be a problem. But if you're all above the Pareto frontier and 
uh, your competent players, I don't think necessarily having a quote unquote weaker option versus an OP option is as deterministic as people seem to treat it as. And in fact, I think that it's a very interesting challenge to take a weaker option and specifically find a way to make it work for you. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying right now. Because like I am 100% going to make a video essay about this someday when I have the time. But that is high on the list is specifically about that. Um, You're out of your depth, Spelunker. Are you lost? These ruins belong to the ages, Mole Knight. They're mine now. But more importantly, is that your digging implement? <laughs> ha 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 ha. I'm astonished you made it ten feet down with that rusty train. I will bury you. Whoop. Don't. I just love that little sparks happening. This guy, of all of them, feel why did it change me back to the. Of all of the. the. Battles, I would say this guy feels the most, um, the most Mega Man. Whoops. <laughs> ah. Okay, I see how this guy works. I need to keep using the D-pad because I keep accidentally using my special health weapon. Nope. 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 Fire. Fire. Oh, no. 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 Okay, oh, it's getting a little dicey. Oh, it's getting a little dicey. Ah, dang it. Monster Sanctuary, huh? I am not familiar, but I will maybe check that one out. Generally, if I do an RPG, it's gotta be one with like timing commands, like the Mario RPG Paper Mario, uh, all, the, the, all the Mario RPGs are pretty good about that. Um, but, um, for uh, an action RPG, I'm into those because you know, RPG is more about the stat system and the story in that case than necessarily the. The, uh,. Gameplay style. Not a huge fan of, say, like the Bethesda American style RPGs so much. Just because I think Bethesda are horrible storytellers. Like, they just don't understand what people actually want out of those stories. And they're just kind of making stuff that they think is cool, question mark. Snap it. Snap it. What do you with my sweat? Shuffle. There we go. Uh, a power band where it's like, this is fine and everyone's having fun, I guess. Good game design. Particularly, it makes... Probably makes that band wider. Yeah, well, that's the thing, too, is I think, um, I don't know. I think if everything is, like, perfectly balanced, the, the, the gameplay can become very homogenous in a way that I personally would want to avoid as a designer. Um, like, to me, the thrill of a game is in the challenge. Or rather, the, the thrill of the game is in finding the heuristics, right? It, it's the, the bushiness of a game. I'm 
going into too many inside baseball terms. Uh, it basically, as long as you are learning something about the game, it is still entertaining. Whether that's something about how you can play the game to be better at it, or something to... Um, something to teach you the literal... like, rules of the game. And, yeah, once you hit... Once you hit the point where you're no longer getting anything new from it, that's when things come... become kind of... Uh, samey. Which isn't always a problem, necessarily. Like... Uh, that's one reason why I like board games so much, because even when they are perfectly... perfectly balanced, it comes down to the people at the table bringing their own imbalance. But, you know, once everybody at the table is perfectly skilled, 100% going up against each other, it's like, that's not... That's not my jam. Um... By a yes. Yes, yes, yes. Alright, what else you got? Yeah, exactly, and that's not even... That's the thing that... I, I guess I get a little frustrated with when it comes to uh, game design is that when I say that it's not even like my personal philosophy or like an opinion of any kind like that that's that is what is entertaining about games full stop like people who have been studying it for hundreds of years have determined through tons of observation that uh that's what humans enjoy about games. Which is why it frustrates me when people are like, I don't want to learn a new game, and it's like, but you do what you want to keep learning the game you're doing, so what's the difference? Chess is very well balanced, but it's also not perfectly balanced since white has an advantage. Also, it doesn't really matter at the skill level 99% of games are played at. Yeah. Um, who am I talking to? Oh, what do I want? That's what I want. And I don't care as much about what you got. And then, yeah, I know it's probably faster to have gone back up to the catapult, but we're just gonna run back here and do that music. Cool. I think there's some nostalgia in comfort playing a game you already know, so that's probably what those people are opting for over learning something new. Well, yeah... I suppose there is also, like, a visceral element to it, right? Because, like, I play Banjo-Kazooie again every, you know, couple years, even though I have 100 percented it several times now. Uh, but... Uh... Yeah, a, a lot of that is that just experiencing that world, and particularly experiencing that movement system. Because for me as well, when it comes to like a 3D platformer, or just anything, like, a good movement system is what I want in a game. Like, a game that has a fun, interesting movement system will always be top-notch for me. And if a game has a bad movement system, I will hate it forever. That's why I didn't like Frog Gun. Because it attempted to have a good move s movement system, but the movement was stiff and unpredictable. 
and the controls were not very good. Which granted, it's an indie game, it was one person, so it's pretty good for that, but that doesn't change the fact that it was an incredibly frustrating experience. Especially when some things in there that I would consider like speedrun tactics. The large problem with that game was that like, super far into the game, like two thirds of the way, they're like, oh, by the way, you can do this grapple move. And now for the rest of the game, you have to do that grapple move and you have to do it perfectly for most every like challenge you put in front of you. And it's like, thanks. Thanks for introducing something this late into the game and then making it a constant requirement. I love it. Like, you can't just introduce an incredibly difficult movement mechanic in Act 3 of a game and then expect people to be pulling it off. You have to ease them in. You have to kind of, like, introduce them to it slowly over the course of the entire game. Especially when that is literally how you beat the final boss, you have to be able to do that. So clearly, they should have been teaching us since the beginning and not that deep in. Especially when most of the, like, spaces coming up to that, there wasn't a lot new happening. So that they fully could have taught it, like, way earlier, but they chose to wait for some reason. It's bad world design, man. this. I haven't played Tribes. Isn't Tribes, like, impossible to play at this point, though? Like, I that's specifically the thing I've always heard about Tribes, is that it is near impossible to play, and the community that is left to play it is not super great, because they are so desperate for people that they'll accept uh, some really questionable people. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'm not very good at shooters, so not really a jam. Especially shooters that are going to be most... Multiplayer shooters that are going to be mostly populated by people who are experts at it. Like, when I, I went to try out Apex Legends, it was miserable because everybody in it... It's like I would run around for like 10 minutes trying to find anything to do, and then the second I saw anybody, I would be immediately destroyed because it was full of people who were just incredible at it. So, yeah, it's definitely one of those games where you kind of just got in on it early. No, what even happened? Oh, God damn it, I hate this shadow mechanic. I love this game, but this shadow mechanic is awful. I do not, I do not like it at all. Like, I get it, I get it, it it's certainly different. And I understand from a design standpoint why you would include something like this, but I hate it. I despise it. It is so infuriating because all it's doing is basically covering your eyes for like 10 seconds. It's like if someone ran in and took my glasses off of me for like 10 seconds and then let me put them back on for like a minute. Like, why would that be fun? It's irritating. Plus, I don't like having lights just flashed in my eyes. That's not fun. Whoa! Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Ooh. Don't worry about it. I gotta worm back this way. So I'm gonna need a little more space to deal with him. Okay, let's see if I can... Yeah, I can Like so. Haha. <laughs> Ah, I missed a ton of that. <sighs> Do 
Titanfall 2, yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing I've always heard about Tribes, is that it has a really fun movement system. But when I say I want a fun movement system, I don't necessarily want a complicated movement system. I want something that just feels viscerally, intuitively nice. Had in Time was a great example. The platforming that was stellar, probably still the best of recent memory. With you by our side, Black Knight, total dominion is within our grasp. I beg of you, take my words to heart. Your safety is my only concern. Was that the Enchanter? Tell me what you... Haven't you tired of the charades? Stay out of this. Never were one to blindly follow Black Knight, but the Order and the Enchanter must be stopped. Fool, you're headed down a ruinous path. The only path I seek leads to the Tower of Fate, and I will reach it. <laughs> Never steal thy shovel. It's also... The movement system... If the movement system is to support, like, just a shooter where the actual winning of the game is mostly based around your ability to accurately fire a gun, it's, I'm not into that. I, I find that pretty... pretty miserable, too, mainly just because I'm not very good at it. And I know, it's like, get better at it. It's like, I don't really care to, because, like, frankly, the genre... I don't know. It, it, it came up while I was playing games, but I just never had, like, a PC, and I didn't really have friends when Halo was coming around, so, like, I never really got into shooters. It just kind of, as a genre, passed me by. And, like, I'm not terrible at it. I beat Doom 2016. I've gotten a decent way through Doom Eternal. It's just, like, those games are very different. They're more, like, resource management games than necessarily just, uh, Yeah, no, I saw Titanfall 2. I, I know you mean both, but I'm also saying that, like, I know that Tribes also has a great movement system, but it's like... Yeah, I'm also not interested in anything that has, like, a special trick to making the movement work. Like, it should be, if it's something like that, where it's an accident. No, I like a movement system that is programmed well with decent controls. I'm not, I'm not really interested necessarily in something that moves well if you f fuck around with it, right? Like in Quake, they have the, the rocket jump, and it's like, that's probably fun if you get used to it, but it's like, I don't care to learn a trick that wasn't intended. I'm sure it's fun, but it's like, that's not what I'm looking for. I believe I need the infinite dagger for that bit. Yeah, Tribes 2, like, it had a verticality that other FPSs never really had. But, from everything I've heard, the larger issue with the game is that they were basically like, if anybody complains about anything, we will change it. They listened to the fans every time, and that meant uh, the game sucked, because fans don't actually know what makes the game work, and also they don't actually know what they want. They think they want the thing that keeps killing them to be nerfed, but in reality, uh, they probably just don't like the game. And all they're doing is ruining it for people who actually do like the game and don't want to try and blame it on the other players or, you know, trying to say that it must not be that I am bad or that it's... or anything like that. It must be that something is inherently wrong with the design. It must be nerfed. Shit. I was looking over at chat. I'm just very out of practice with this game. I'm definitely, I think this is still like the better, uh, one of the best runs I've ever done of this game. Cause like, 
prior to Mole Knight, I don't think I actually lost any of the bosses. I might be wrong on that. But it's been a pretty solid run so far. Not that I'm 100%ing or anything, I'm just casual run, you know, for funsies. But it's also like, if you know a game well enough, a casual run means something kind of different, you know? Like, my casual runs of Banjo-Kazooie are going to be 100% runs, because I just know where everything is, so why not? Especially because that's what the game is about. Whereas here, it's more just like, I'm being uh, nice with myself about, you know, not getting 100% of all the secrets. But yeah, I'm not... I, I, I like a good movement system that is intentionally good. I don't want, like one that is, you know, by accident, it ended up being kind of cool. Like, that's fun. That stuff is fun to play around with, but that doesn't impress me because it the designers didn't mean to do that. Obviously, unintentional design stuff is going to happen, but also, like, I want to see what the designer actually intended, and yeah, I also am a, a large thing to me is level design, so if they didn't intend a particular type of movement for the, the levels that they designed, then it's not going to be that, uh, that satisfying. You know? Because, like, all you're going to be, do be doing is breaking the game, and it's like, I don't want to break the game. The reason I play games is because I want to have a, a curated experience. Right? Like, I want to see what it is that the designer had in mind. And what decisions they made. Like, th the way I play games is more of an analysis than it is necessarily, like... I mean, it is, it is a form of entertainment still, because I find that entertaining. But, like, yeah, I'm coming at it from a very analytical like, viewpoint. I'm not... I'm not necessarily even looking for a game that I think that I am actively enjoying. I'm looking for a game that creates an experience that I'm impressed with and does interesting things with the design um, on a regular basis, you know? this I'm into. It makes it like a weird spatial... See, that's the thing, is this adds to the platforming and it shakes up the formula in that way. Whereas the shadows, it's like it makes the platforming more difficult. But it's... I don't know, it just like breaks up the flow, right? Because the only way... It's basically like you can risk-reward, try and go faster, just to um, get through it faster. Or you can play it safe and, like, wait. But in either case, it's just frustrating for me because it's like all this added stimulus that ends up just screwing me up for reasons that feel pretty unfair because all it is is denying me information. Like with this right here, I can see immediately like, okay, I have to figure out this situation and work my way through it. Versus with that, it's like, great. 
It's just gonna be flashing lights in my eyes for a few minutes, and I just gotta kinda accept that. I don't know, It's it just feels cheap, I guess. It feels like a very cheap way to try and add difficulty to a stage. And it's like, it's creative, it's an interesting system, whatever. But just, yeah, they really... It's just... Do me first, or whatever. I, I hate to have to say that all the time because it should be obvious that this is my opinion. I'm sitting here playing a game and just commentating over it. Like, this is just commentary. This isn't news. I haven't sat down and, like, researched into what it is I dislike about that particular mechanic. Let me up, let me up. Why does this double bird look so nervous? He looks so sad. Is it because he does not know whether he is coming or going? Or is it something worse? Yeah, these biking guys are out of here. Speaking of annoying. I forgot you could do that. Whoop! There we go. Okay. Missed out on that little bit of jab space. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not into... I don't want to have to memorize stuff. I just... And also, again, like, the movement and the flow is one of the things that I find the most valuable and satisfying. And all they're doing with that is denying me flow and momentum. I have to stop dead. Or take, like, a huge risk. Nope! Ah. Speaking of which... Oh, it, all the way back here? Oh, man. Ugh. This is, like, on the line. Because, like, one of my other things that... Um, came up. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? That came up when I played Hotline Miami. Is a uh, good regular checkpointing is what can uh, create or regulate frustration in a game. So yeah, this would be on the line, I would say. This is like, no, no, no. God, just like, go up. These checkpoints are just far enough away that they're not that annoying, but yeah, if they were even a little more. Mainly for this specific part, because there's so much because this is such a slow means of transportation that having to go back to the beginning of this section is frustrating. But it is towards the end of the game, so it makes sense for it to be a little more challenging. It's, it's pretty well-tuned, but also it's like, uh, 
uh, sometimes the checkpoints are based around specific showcase parts. Like that section, it was clear that that mechanic is specific, is something they specifically wanted to keep within its own section. But that becomes a little annoying when you have to go back through it. Point. Ah, God. Um, just go through these trousers. I don't want the yellow. Nope, wrong button. That's true. Yeah, I remember people trying to claim that this was a Nintendo hard, and it's not. Like, I think people forget just how difficult... Just how difficult NES games actually were. Like, if you play uh, Ninja Gaiden, that game is absolutely brutal. Like, unfair. And at the time, that's fine. Because if it wasn't, it'd be like a, a 20 minute game. Very short. Man, this treasure magnet thing is going. Did it add together both? So is it gonna go for two minutes? Maybe that's the case. I don't know. I never use it because it's like I'm never really hurting for treasure in this game. Yeah, I played a decent amount of Ninja Gaiden. I think I got close to the end, but it's I have not beaten it. It's super hard. I think with like a rewind feature, it might be, uh, it might not be too bad. But, yeah, as it is, if you play it on original hardware, it's ludicrous. But then there are people who speedrun that, and I'm like, how? I can't even regular run that. Oh, come. Come on. Yeah, I feel like if they did, like, a remaster of Ninja Gaiden, although everybody's... With remasters, everybody's like, do it 100% accurate to the original, and it's like, that's not the point of making something new. I would like to see if someone is making a game again, I would like to see uh, uh, why am I blanking on it? Something of life. Length of life? That's not it. Something of life improvements. I swear to god, why can't I remember the first word? Ease of life? That's not it. Uh... Quality of life, that's it. Yeah, like, I was really disappointed, honestly, when they had uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which I streamed on here. I was hoping they would take the opportunity, fuck. I was hoping they would take the opportunity to maybe improve the physics in Mario Sunshine, because that game, if it had decent physics, would be so much better. That's the really the thing holding it back. Because everybody remembers it being a, a pretty good game, right? But that's the thing is, when people say that, it's rarely when they're actually playing it. Because when you play that game, it's pretty frustrating. Especially when you get to like parts where it's kind of like 
it, it's more or less required to go through something that's physics-based. And, uh, yeah, the physics in that game are absolutely awful. Oh my god! Ugh. Yeah, well, especially with Ninja Gaiden, one of the reasons it's so especially hard is because enemies just respawn immediately. Imme you don't even have to leave. They will just keep spawning endlessly forever. And that is... absolutely ridiculous. Like, the movement system is pretty neat for the NES. And it's satisfying enough combat, but yeah, the enemy placement, the level design, is just sadistic. It is not... It is not even cool, dude. And I think the only reason it's really remembered so fondly is because it was... That's the thing. Is I think a lot of games on the NES were not very good, but they were much better than games that had come before it. And they were programmed well enough that people were willing to put up with it. Like, I don't really like the first Zelda game. I think it's pretty cumbersome, and the lack of any kind of waypointing or, like, direction is just super frustrating. Like, y'all can see, I tried to stream that game, and I couldn't find the second dungeon. I went over, I scoured that map for, like, hours, and I could not find the second dungeon. And when I finally looked up where it was, I am positive this place it ended up being is a spot that I looked. And, like, yeah, I get that the, the fun of it is, like, exploring or whatever, but it's, like... Just some kind of hint, man. Would have been nice. That was something they did good in Link's Awakening, is when you finish, like, one dungeon, they would give you, like, a little hint as to where the next dungeon would be. They weren't always great hints. But they at least tried. I like how sometimes the enemies in this, this game will just be a wolf. Just a straight-up wolf slip sliding around. A little wolf paws. Yeah, I, I also like going back and playing the original Mario Brothers on uh, NES. The controls kind of suck. In fact, going back to Mario 64, this is where I get controversial. I hate the controls for Mario 64, actually. They feel very bad. It is not fluid. Like, you can do a lot of things. You can do all sorts of crazy jumps and stuff, but it's like, they don't flow at all. Like, they, they, they don't flow at all. Your speed is weird and frustrating. Your momentum is kind of clunky. The camera does not help. The camera is actually pretty nightmarish in that game, and I get it. It's, like, again, it's, like, for 3D platformers, that's what we had. And it's, if it was the only 3D platformer, it'd be pretty good. But, uh, it's not. So, yeah, in hindsight, it's, like, it's pretty, pretty, pretty clunky. And I know people being like, it's a classic, but it's like, how much of that is nostalgia? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Or like drawing a map yourself, which I just don't have the patience to draw out my own map. I don't have the patience mainly because I know I'm not gonna draw a very good map. And I don't even, can't even imagine what I'm gonna draw it on. I don't have, like, I'm not gonna be able to draw small enough. Whoop. 
There we go. Ah, ah, ah. Whoa, there we go. I don't know, a lot of people will say that, it's like, I would say that's an excuse, or that's a reason for why it is the way it is, but then there are so many people who go back to it all the time and they're like, it's it's still great, still holds up, and it's like, it doesn't. I, I played it again, like, I didn't play it a ton as a kid, but I played it a little bit here and there. I remember it feeling pretty good, but like, yeah, going back to it, that game is, not great. It's like super... Here's the thing I noticed with all of the 3D Marios I played, right? Um, though, uh, Galaxy is like not really a 3D Mario. I guess 3D movement, but it's a lot more like the side-scrollers than you may realize. Like it doesn't have like open levels or anything. It's basically just like... Mario uh, 3D World, 3D Land, like they're just, you know, course clear with, uh, uh, turkey. They're just course clear with 3D movement, but, uh, yeah, the thing I noticed is that the beginning of those games, up to, like, the first, like, major boss, are, they're pretty solid. They're pretty good. But then, like, after you fight Bowser for the first time in 64, or, like, before the, like, roller coaster in Sunshine, pretty solid. But after that, it just becomes so ridiculous. Yes, hooray for wall meat. So, my old friend, the day has finally come. Should we not lay down our shovels and part as equals? You've forgotten our oath. What happened to the proud warrior I knew? On a second. I got a marker that. Um, come on. Three manager. There it is. Oh, I should actually go and highlight my last few streams too. I got some markers going on. And the highlighting streams is so tedious. I'm not a fan of uh, editing, really. I like sound design. For sure, I like audio editing, but video editing is just like super tedious. Come on now. There we go. Yeah, it's like. I don't know. I think I was also spoiled because Banjo Kazooie has like one of the cleanest movement systems from that era. Like, just having the ability to make small adjustments is so nice. And something that it took, like, a lot of other 3D platforms a long time to really catch up with. Like, Haddon Time and Mario Odyssey... I guess Mario 60 or uh, Mario Sunshine too, but ah, yeah, the the physics in that are just so bad that it's like hard to really tell. Oh, I love the presentation of this one. What magic is this? Power, honor, the traits of a respectable warrior. Sir, I do not believe we've met. We meet today on the field of battle. We have both defeated many knights and traveled far. Today, we fight. Stand aside! You and I have no reason to battle! Conflict is a reason unto itself, brave knight. Today, 
You will be tested. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's come at you with a little. You know. Should get. I think one of the armors lets you knock it thrown back. Can you uh get hit? I would very much like that because that is a very Ninja Gaiden classic platformer thing getting thrown back when you get hit, and it sucks! God, it sucks! Your skills are as vast as I thought. I shall follow your journey from the shadows. Farewell, Shepard. Thanks for the cash! Wow, that was a lot. Okay, um, let's, yep. Mm, yeah. See, if he wasn't a Kickstarter reward, he would be showing up at the end to actually, like, do something, but as it stands, it's pretty fun. Pretty fun to have those little secret boss battles. Yes, that's the one I want. Okay, yeah, I'm a little slippery now, but just a little bit. Let's go to the Hall of Champions. Now that it won't put me out. Clearly a discerning veteran of the art. Enjoy your visit. Oh, jeez. Hello? Ah! This place is hot! The ghost room in the halls, and we're all trapped here! That includes you! <laughs> so, uh, are you gonna do something about it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess there's ghosts. Oops. There we go. See, this is fun, too. It's like... If this were in an actual level, I would find it very frustrating, but as just like a fun side thing, I'm into this. The, with the, the ball. And I remember when I played it on 3DS, I got pretty good with it, too. Hello? Ah, the ghost will never reach me in here, solid walls, my friend. Totally safe. Where are they? Yeah. Probably shouldn't have wasted that turkey. Oh, well. Huh? Nope. There you go. Oh, come on. Come on, now. Hey, there we go. That's, uh, what, that's what Simon Toast Ken. Anybody remember him? Is that Bert McElroy on the top there? I know Aaron Hansen has a grump face in here somewhere. But that's all I can say for sure. I'm sure there's plenty of like now super dated or like gaming personalities who just kind of disappeared. Maybe for better or for worse. Not that, ah, yep, see, you can tell that one's Grump face. Um. Yeah, it's real, real disheartening how many people who were pretty big in the gaming space, you know, when this game came out, ended up being groomers of the sort, child predators. Yeah, there he is. Uh, but, you know, what can you do other than self-police your communities? 
I've learned during my travels a ghost saved life. Now you know too. I can't believe I saved up all my money for this. Yeah, this is pretty expensive just to get ghosts. I think it ended up being, and I mean, maybe this is because it's like such a, so popular with kids, but mostly Minecraft YouTubers, right? Like that's the stereotype at this point, is that Minecraft YouTubers are uh, generally also groomers. Because at the, at the same time, anyone who's successful at that is also generally exploiting kids on some level, because so much of being popular online is exploitation, right? It's it's not always super insidious, but like a lot of it is really leaning into the parasocial aspects, and a lot of it is, in general, just using a lot of uh, manipulation techniques. That I, yeah, that's really the larger reason why I was kind of, um, why I was like back and forth on coming back to streaming because it's like I was doing a ton of research into how to grow your stream and everything they said was correct oh great you blew by secret hiding spot now the ghost will get us both uh, but it was also just so scummy and like manipulative and I was like do I really want to do that and the answer is no but the answer is also I can still stream even if I don't do that, I just have to come to terms with the fact that I'm never really going to pop off unless I get really lucky and go viral, which, at the same time, kind of is what was going to happen anyways with the state of streaming the way it is. So I kind of just have to be happy with not ever really being a big streamer because I don't want to use all the manipulative marketing tactics. Like, yeah, if people are doing that, it's like, whatever, get that bag, I guess. But it's also weird being very heavily manipulated. So much of the design of Twitch and a lot of streaming platforms is, um... It's really centered on just exploiting people who... Exploiting people with the promise of getting famous, basically. Like... Whoop. Yeah, I wonder what they're gonna do in Mean of the Hollow Earth for this. I'm curious what they did in, what was it, Katana Zero? Which I think was, I don't know if that was a Kickstarter game or not. Um, but Mina definitely is. I'm very excited for it. be a while still. Still deep into development. But at the same time, when they made this game, they were a brand new studio. And now it's like they're they're not a huge studio, but they're like big enough that they, they certainly have more resources and they have more people. So I feel like they'll be able to work somewhat more quickly. What? Stop. Come on. Ugh. Oh, I think I only got uh, one more. There we go. First try. I don't know, maybe that's just the the circles I'm in. But I definitely hear a lot of jokes about uh, Minecraft uh, YouTubers being, being groomers. <sighs> Whatever, I got a lot of cash. From that, so it was worth it. Uh, okay. The Infinidagger! Okay. Here we go. Time 
to the jelly birds. Let's see, this one's very nice because it just super leans into all the the bouncing and the pouncing. But yeah, Twitch is very much designed to like act like, oh, you're gonna be a famous streamer, but it's like you're not. Most people on here are not gonna be famous in any kind of way. In fact, even building a community if you don't use those manipulation tactics is uh pretty difficult. My community is I mean I, I can hardly even call it one, frankly. You two are like some of the only people who've ever come back from more than one stream, really. And I know both of you outside of Twitch, so like yeah, I don't have any kind of diehard fan. Um, in the way of, like, watches every stream, I only know them because of Twitch, I guess. I don't, I don't have that core guy. But I do appreciate y'all for watching, of course. I don't know. I think that I am friendly and sociable enough to chat that... I feel like it's so hard to engage, but it is. It's very hard to get people talking in chat. No matter, it, the weirdest ones to me consistently are going to be the ones where they just, someone comes in and just says hi or hey or hello, just a greeting. I say, hey, how's it going? Ask them some kind of question and they just, that's it. That's the only thing they ever say. It's like, why did you... What was going on there? I don't get it. Oh, yeah, this... This ability to just... Quetcha! With one... One sweep on the pile. Ooh, that's nice. Wish you could... I could probably get it earlier in the game. But... It could be tricky. Ah, oh, man! Ah, I timed it out wrong. Oh, yeah, another thing. Speaking of the stream and changes, uh, I finally got a real boom arm for my mic. Because, like, for the longest time, I was using a crappy, like, $15 one? $30 one? I don't remember. If you look up boom arm on Amazon, you're mostly going to see the same crappy one under a million different... Fake company names that sound vaguely techy, vaguely Chinese. They're the same thing. They're drop shippers. They're they're selling you the same thing under different brand names. And they're always of low quality. Right? That's just that's Amazon, that's buying stuff on the internet now. Because there was a point where buying stuff on the internet was the way to go. It would always be better, and now it's been co-opted by people exploiting the, um, exploiting SEO and stuff, exploiting search engines to make money, and just, yeah, it sucks, um, but I got a real boom arm, the Rhodes, Rhodes, I can't remember if it's plural or not, but the Rhodes PSA-1, it is a microphone boom arm, and it's the one that they're clearly trying to emulate with the, uh... No! It's clearly the one they're trying to emulate with all of those knockoffs. Um, very poorly. Because the problem with them is they have... They're just very poorly engineered, poorly designed. Like, it technically works. If you never have to move the mic, then it will it will hold the mic up. But it's so cheap that it's like just constantly... The parts are scraping together, flaking metal off everywhere because it's cheap metal. Um... I think you can trick me. See that down there? Weird. Let me in. 
Um, these springs are all on the outside, so they're like super ugly and super loud. Uh, hold on. This out. And uh, it has just like all these stupid little plastic knobs that you gotta like twiddle it with to, you know, keep it in the position it's supposed to be in. And then most of the time it still won't. It'll still be droopy and weird. Chester! My man! Infinite Dagger! Propeller Dagger. Oh. Did they change the name, or did I just forget what it was? Or maybe... I swear, I know that it's called the Infinite Dagger in the Grumps playthrough, so... Either they changed the name, or the Infinite Dagger is something else that I forgot about. Whoop. Oh, hey! Nice. Oh, okay. Uh, whoop. Um. But yes, this one is so much nicer. It's like, it costs like three or maybe six times as much for the really cheap ones. Though they're all the same, so you should, if you get one of those, you should just get the cheapest one. But I would not recommend it. I would recommend, one million percent, I would recommend saving up for the real thing. Because this is so much nicer. First of all, it's way larger, so I actually have way more range of movement of where I can put it. Um, it's... Oh. oh, there must have been something up there before I forgot. Uh, uh, uh. Although, I hear generally it's... YouTubers, streamers in general, are racist, is generally the stereotype. Um. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the arm is... It, it's quiet. I mean, it's not silent. You can still kind of hear some rumbles when I move it around. But it's it can go much further. It's much more stable. I never have to worry about it drooping or anything. Um, it's very strong. I actually, like, pinched my finger in it because it said it was, like, all closed up in the package, and it was like, warning, spring-loaded, and I took that sleeve off, and I was like, whatever. That's kind of silly. I know it's spring-loaded, but then as soon as I started to undo it, it just snapped open to its full extent and pinched my dang finger. So... Yeah, don't, don't underestimate. Oh, I timed that just slightly wrong. I was like one second too early. But uh, yeah, and that's the thing is it stayed in that fully open position. And I was like, what the heck? This isn't gonna work. I needed to be able to stay wherever I wanna put the mic. Right, that's what I thought, but then Here's the thing, I put the mic on. Uh, oh, there's a sword in there. I put the mic on, and uh, as soon as I did, the weight of the mic, because this is engineered correctly and designed well, it like, ah, son of a bitch. It, it like counterweights it and holds it perfect so that wherever, you, as soon as the mic is on there, wherever you put it, it just stays. That's... I don't even fully understand how that works. That's awesome. I mean, I could have not risked it for the red gems, but it's fine. I don't mind that much. Yeah, I like this so much. It's like I can move it wherever. Before, it's like I was so nervous about like adjusting anything on uh, 
on that stand because it was always such a pain and most of the time it would droop and not work. And this is not a heavy mic. This is like a less than two pound mic. So it definitely should not have been drooping. Um, but it is very sturdy now and it's big enough that I can uh, now I can use my mic standing up, which I never wanted to do before because it would mean getting a different stand out and setting all of that up. But now it's like, I don't even have to do that. I just have to stand up and move the mic to my face. Awesome. Plus, I'm wanting to do more music production. I, I've done some music in the past. I don't really... It's all been live. I haven't recorded it. But, uh... Yeah, I want to do more, and not having, like, not being able to stand up to sing, or, like, record vocals in any way, uh, has been one of the things holding me back. God damn it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't... I, I really, like, thought it wouldn't matter... God damn it. I really thought it wouldn't matter for the longest time, and I just had that cheap, cheap arm. Son of a bitch. Let me... Mm, usually when they have this in a game, if you hold the direction of the fan, it won't push you away immediately. It will hold you still, so you can't make progress, but you don't lose. Ugh. The more of these rats. Rats. Too bad for them. Oh, guys. Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot of verticality in this one that definitely can screw you up. Um. Oh, I heard my phone go. That might be my roommate's asking me about something. Nope. Okay. Sometimes they do. Um. But yeah, it is so worth it. It's like, get it used, first off, as always. Um, get your equipment used, because the reality is, it is so safe to buy equipment used now. It might not have been at one point, but it's like, yeah, no, eBay will protect you. Sweetwater and Reverb, who are the other two big audio equipment resellers, will protect you if they if they don't say it's broken, and then they send it to you and it's broken, you will get your money back. So you don't have to worry about that. And the thing is, if there's like small wear and tear, it's either cosmetic, which you don't care about, or it's so minor that like, especially if you're starting out, you're not gonna know the difference. But then, yeah, especially with this, like, an uh, boom arm, like, yeah, why wouldn't I have this used, you know? Though, I'm pretty sure when I got it used on Amazon, because it came in a Sweetwater box with all of the accoutrements, I'm pretty sure whoever sold it to me just, like, resold it. They just bought it on Sweetwater and then resold it to me at a profit, so I probably could have just gotten it straight from Sweetwater, but whatever. I don't really care that much, because I also got free shipping doing it on Amazon, so it's like, in the end, I think it didn't cost me anything extra. Ooh, let me up, let me up. Ooh, do, do, do. Get over, get over. Thank you. Yeah, definitely recommend a decent real boom arm if you do any kind of audio production or streaming like this. Because, like, that other one was just so tiny and cramped. Like, man, I didn't even realize. Because I just wanted to get something proper because I was, like, tired of it flaking metal everywhere. But, like, holy crap, I really underestimated how cramped that made me feel and how uncomfortable it was to, like, do anything with that stand. It was awful.
And I've seen people with those same stands trying to do the, like, over the monitor, like, over top of the monitor setup, and then it droops and breaks their monitor. Because, yeah, they're really just not very good. Ah, my petite blue friend, the sunset sh Oh, no, wait, this guy's French. Ah, my petite blue friend, the sunset, she is beautiful, no. Get down here and face me, you gyroscopic jester! Oh, so rude, my crew, they were not all speed the bell. My sheep, it was not magnificent. I'm not here to be entertained, I must reach the Tower of Fate. No oh, business, no pleasure, such a shame. Very well then, on guard. I do like Propeller Knight a lot. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to, uh, oh, 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 no thanks, no thanks. Very excited to do some music production. Now that I've got that, and I've got a way to, um, I have my piano. First of all, I know how to play piano now, which I didn't really when I did music before. Like, I knew some basics, but, like, I didn't have the coordination or any of the real basics down. But, yeah, now I can actually use my piano as a MIDI keyboard, because, thankfully, it can connect like that. Oh, so, but... Ooh! Um... And... It just... It, I have a space setup that, like, feels... Uh, just intuitive and comfortable. Like, I think that more than anything, when you're starting out at something and you're feeling young and scrappy about it, you're like, ah, whatever, I'll just do whatever's cheapest and uh, save myself some money, save myself some time, just get it done. But, like, as you get into it more, my biggest advice to anyone getting into anything is figure out the way to have a comfortable workflow. Because the reality is, the more of a pain in the ass it is to do something, the less likely you are to do it, no matter how much you love it. Like, I love music. I want to make it so bad. But just the idea of, like, having to figure out how to, like, play with my computer keyboard and doing vocal, like, having to change up my entire recording setup to be able to stand up, like, it was just such a big prospect that I never wanted to actually knuckle down and do it. But now, it's like, it was that way with voiceover. It's like, yeah, you can make, like, a temporary blanket fort thing that you can record in, but, like, you're not gonna do that every time. And at a certain point, it's like, you know, if all you're doing is auditions, it's like, ugh, I don't want to do it. Right? So the thing that really was able to make me, like, commit to doing voiceover was just getting a comfortable recording space so that I could sit down and record quickly and efficiently in a good workflow. And that's, yeah, I think people really underestimate how much that is. And they've done studies. It's like musicians, professional musicians, are way more likely to practice if their instrument is already set up. Rather than having, even if like right now my computer or my piano, all I'd have to do is open the stand, put the piano down, turn on my iPad, that's it, to practice. But that is just enough that I'm like, maybe I'll do it later. <sighs> Let's see, what, what have people been saying? This is like every Sky stage, oh my God, right? That's the thing is where, that's the kind of one where he's not a hard guy to beat, but um, the stage is the real enemy there, you know? Whoop, boink. Oh wait, crap, I got a boink, boink. Whoop, no! Oh, I forgot what the button was. But like, yeah, just having a fully set up recording space that you can just walk into, hit record, and start going, right? Or like, creating a, um, a good workflow for like, how you're gonna do auditions. Cause, mm, 
if you're just... Like, if you aren't organized, if you're like, I'm gonna look for auditions and just do them as they come in, it's like... You're not, though, because, you know, you're gonna have to think about, like, labeling and all of this. Like, you have to really think about, like, how to make it as simple and easy. Like, that's the thing, is, it's a lot of work to set stuff like that up. But once you set it up, it should be easy, relatively easy, to just do the thing. And if it's not, you should do some work to make it easy. You know? Like, that's what work smarter, not harder is all about. Like, you should just put in the work this time, so that next time, you don't have to put in the work. I'm super stoked. Plus, I'll probably do some stream standing up too, because, like, sitting here the whole time gets a little taxing. Whoa. Go. 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 And up. And around. There we go. Ooh, I see. I see your tricks. Whoa. 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 Wah! Oh, oh. Ooh, you gotta do it blind, eh? Ooh! Ah, I thought I got it. Just slightly too low. There we go. Ah, oh, sweet. I hit the, uh, 21... 20,000... ...region. That's all the gems, at least. Uh, what else is happening? Um, saw the Five Nights at Freddy's movie yesterday. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I'm real shocked at how poor, like, how poor it's doing critically, because, like, it's certainly nothing special, but it's getting, like, horrible reviews. It's, like, 25%, I think. But it's like, it's not... No, it's like, realistically, it's probably like a 5 out of 10. It's a decent horror movie. It's nothing super special, but it's like they, they put in the time. They made something that's, you know, emotionally resounding. The, I mean, the animatronics look spectacular. Like, they look perfect. It just looks like the animatronics from the game. Full stop. 100%. It just, they're identical. Like, it's surreal seeing, like, physical, practical, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, man. That alone is, like, awesome. And frankly, I, I'm i frustrated that so many critics are like, oh, it's not that great. It's like, buddy, for that alone, this is a su uh, superb horror movie. Because we don't get that anymore. We don't get cool practical effects anymore. So for that alone it's just fun to watch. But then like, yeah, the story is pretty solid. It's not amazing. But it for like horror movie? Like a horror story? It's it's pretty alright. Um and, oh, God damn it. And I know, I know. A lot of people take umbrage with the, like, for a blank, it's good kind of argument. But it's like, yeah. You can't... You can't rate every type of movie on the same scale, because not every movie is trying to be on the same scale. That's something that frustrates me about your movie sucks. Because, like, I think that he is a, a pretty smart guy who knows a lot about movies. Um, but I think the way that he views movies is frustrating because he rates them more or less all on the same scale. 
and it just I uh, it just feels unfair Did they expect me to like switch the no There we go. Okay. In the end, I lost like five thousand, but whatever. Um, it's you and me. Yeah, we're gonna sell these off. But like, I don't know. When he's like railing on the Mario movie for being a stupid movie for babies, and like being pissed off that people are, like, enjoying it. It feels... Yeah, it feels... It feels, uh... Disingenuous? It, it feels like it's bad faith, frankly. Like, it feels like he's intentionally rating it against stuff that it should not be rated against. Oh, no, I don't have enough for that. And I don't know, I just find it very frustrating when someone... When someone acts like a movie is trying to be something that it isn't. What the Five Nights at Freddy's movie was trying to be was a pretty decent adaptation of the game. And you know what? It is. Especially... Um, especially for a video game adaptation? Pretty good. Like... Like, we don't have a ton of good video game adaptations. And, like, this was pretty solid, both as, like, you know, accuracy to the source material and just general quality. Like, it's not one-to-one -one accurate, but it's like, I wouldn't want a movie that is one-to-one -one accurate of Five Nights at Freddy's. That would be miserable. So, for what it was trying to be, it did a pretty good job. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I keep s telling people when they ask how how it was, is it's about as good as we could have hoped for. Like, it's not gonna blow up the Oscars, but for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, pretty good. Pretty good. I think Josh Hutcherson was solid. I swear... Did I already fight him? I swear there's like a secret boss fight where you get to fight him. Maybe I did that in the overworld. I don't remember. Oh, for sure. I mean, very often I'll be like, I don't think it was a good movie, but I liked it a lot. You know? There's many movies that I love where I'm like, this is not actually a very good movie. But at the same time, I don't necessarily buy into the whole, it's so bad it's good. Um, I think that movies exist on two separate spectrums at the same time. They exist on a quality spectrum is to say, like, just genuinely trying to be good. Damn it. Oh, no, oh, that sucks. Like, you know, like, just genuinely great. Um, and there's an entertainment factor. There's plenty of movies I've watched that are amazing, but are so boring. But then there's tons of movies that I've watched that are pretty bad, but they're like super entertaining. And I don't know. 
I, I think really our problem is that we treat treat it as like a binary of like it's a good movie or it's a bad movie. It's like or even like trying to assign specific numbers. It's like each movie that is released is trying to accomplish different things. And I I would say the only truly bad movie is one that did not accomplish what it was trying to do. Right? And often, it doesn't have to fully accomplish it, but like, if the attempt was sincere, and the effort, there was a lot of effort put into it, that sounds like it's fine to me. That sounds like something I would enjoy. Or often, even if I don't enjoy it, I will still respect it. It's like, they, they did everything they could with it, they had a specific view in mind. I can respect that. But... Yeah, there's plenty of movies where it's like, what they wanted to do with it. And how well- it's like, maybe they did it really well, but what they were trying to do was crappy to begin with. Or maybe it's uh, what they were... They were trying to do something awesome, but they kind of didn't do a great job at doing it. Like, they didn't put in enough effort to make it happen. So... It's, it's, it's just, I think it's more complicated than anything. I, I think the fact that right now we think about numbers so much, because we're looking at Metacritic, or... Uh, God, the thing again. We're, we're looking at, like, Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes, which Rotten Tomatoes is stupid. Don't bother with Rotten Tomatoes. Even as number metrics, it's stupid. Because the number isn't even, like, an aggregate. It's not, like, an average of their, the different scores, like you think it is. It is literally an average of how many people rated it fresh to how many people rated it rotten. Which basically means it can be all 6 out of 10s and get 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So the metric is pointless. But it doesn't matter again anyways, because really, you kinda have to actually read someone's review to really- God damn, I missed my chance on that again. You really gotta read someone's review to actually know what they thought of something. Because, like, there's so much nuance in actually what they took from it, what they said about it. Like, I am IGN's review said that it's like, oh, it was bad because it was a departure from, from the gameplay. And it's like, yeah, it's not a game, it's a movie. That's, that's kind of the thing I think people forget, is that gameplay is, is a pretty large part of, uh, the storytelling in games. In early games, it was the only part, right? Like, um, you really, like, maybe you'd have, like, a silly cutscene or something, but you wouldn't really have a ton of space to, like, tell a story in any kind of traditional narrative way. So you really had to tell it with just the gameplay alone. It. It. Nice. Booge. Okay. Um... But, like, yeah, if you're making it into a movie, it has to be, a, the story has to be told in a very different way. And it, it was. Like, it's, it's still pretty accurate to the game in terms of, like, pacing and stuff, but, you know, it's, it's not the game. And it wasn't trying to be, it was trying to be a movie. And it did pretty good. I liked it a lot. As someone who is a, a fan of the series, but not a die-hard fan, because I don't really agree with a lot of the design decisions um, after the original three, really. I don't agree with a lot of the design decisions. How do I put this? The only ones that I would say are actually genuinely that good 
are one and three. One is genuinely great. Super good, like lightning in a bottle. Like genuinely, I don't think even Scott Cawthon fully, fully comprehends why it worked so well. And I feel like a lot of it ended up coming from intuition. Like, I don't think a lot of it was conscious choices as much as it was just like the intuition of what will be effective. Which is interesting considering the kinds of games he made before FNAF. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great game. Second one is not really, uh, it's stressful. Uh, th that's the thing, is like, it's not really a scary game as much as it's just a stress management game. Yes. Which isn't bad. It's like a fun game, but it's like, yeah, it's... It was kind of experimental since Scott had... Uh, oh. Because, like, Scott had only made one horror game before that, so he wasn't... It, it, he didn't seem to be super comfortable with the genre yet. And he was still, like, really experimenting with what it was. Plus, I mean, there's a level of passion to the first one that the others don't necessarily have, where... He was, like, not a super... He, it wasn't his first game. He made a lot of games before that. Very kid-friendly Christian games. Like, that's the thing is, his, he, they were like deeply Christian games before Five Nights at Freddy's. But then everybody was like, your 3D models look like creepy Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. And he took that and basically said, I'll show you creepy Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. And that's where Five Nights at Freddy's was born. And it was basically, yeah, it was the passion of spite. He was gonna show people, it's like, I am a good designer. I am a good game developer. I am a surgeon. I haven't actually seen the clip, I don't know how he delivers that line, but that I know that, that is some trash, that show. Um Uh yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um it was really that's the thing is like FNAF 2 it feels kind of experimental he was kind of figuring out like what he wanted to do with the series because already the idea of a new FNAF game it's like really that's okay but it's you know it's kind of sloppy um are you fucking kidding me Ugh. I don't like coming off the ladders. Coming off the ladders doesn't feel good and it doesn't feel super predictable. So it feels like a lot of the time if I die coming off the ladder that it was not my fault. Because I, it feels like I judged it correctly. Oh, you know what? Let's He's locked at this. Like, I feel like I came off at the right height, but no, I came off just a few pixels too low. Uh, but... Yeah, the third game, I had some hopes, because actually the third game, while the second game, you know, it's stressful and it has, like, soft rules, like, the way the mask works and the flashlight works is, like, kind of sloppy. It's not super tight. 
um, the third... The third game brought some stuff back. It, like, was... It had some interesting ideas going on. Like, it, it had some interesting ideas. God damn it! Um... That's the thing is that I would rather not have so many sequels to games, right? Oh my god. It's like the last level, but it's really, really giving me trouble. But that's the thing is I don't really want the same game, but more the same game but refined it's like I would rather have a new game please I just yeah I don't know I don't uh, frankly I don't even finish most uh, the first game of most games like very often I give up on a game 80% through because I've hit the point where it's already taught me everything it wants to teach and it's just kind of coasting its way through the end. Like, especially games that have a lot of avatar strength where you, uh, your character just gets so powerful that by the end of the game everything's a breeze and it's like, well, why would I waste my time just breezing through the end of this? When I could just play a new game, they'll have more exciting ideas. God damn it. I didn't want to do that. Basically, I I would say if you want to pace your game correctly, you should line it up so that when you don't have anything new to teach the player, that should lead you into the final boss, which should be, generally, a, uh, a test of everything that you've taught the player. I'm just not going to deal with your ass. Let's go. But, yeah, with Five Nights at Freddy's 3, that felt like a pretty solid sequel. It introduced some new stuff, it still utilized a lot of what worked about the first game, and there were some parts, you know. It's not super solid. Um, it's not super solid, there's a lot of soft rules there too. Like the idea of getting jump scared and not dying, right? That's a cool idea, right? And it definitely throws the player for the loop, for a loop. But it's kind of a, uh, it's like a false relief, right? Cause like the, the, the way, hmm, how do I put this? The way that the jump scares in Five Nights at Freddy's work is that they are the relief in, say music, right? The whole I god damn it. Uh check I didn't miss the checkpoint. Well, I didn't miss the checkpoint. I just didn't think I needed to go to it yet because I didn't think it was that far of a way. I thought it would just be a little side thing that would be quick and easy. It was it would have been quick. But it wasn't easy. Okay, let's go back to the thing. Um, 
or like in a plot for a movie. It's like there's moments of relief and there's moments of tension and the cycling between them was uh, is what makes it interesting, right? So games also work on that principle, generally. That's why we feel bored when we're not challenged because um, that's like a hundred, I don't care. Because when we're not challenged, we end up getting bored, right? And finding the flow state is in finding the point where you are challenged enough to be engaged, but not so challenged that you're frustrated and that your ability lines up with that as well. That's the flow state. Uh, oh my god. Okay. Whew. But, uh... Ah, I see. Mm, clever tricks. I see you back there. I see you back there. So, by having false jump scares where the player is used to getting jump scared and it's a moment of extreme excitement and tension followed by immediate relief because it's when you get released from the game especially in the first FNAF you just keep going there's no there's no pause between nights you finish one night and then you're right on to the next one So similarly, so denying them that relief is, it's an interesting element, but I don't think they really do much with it. Like, you get denied that relief and it's like, oh, okay, and we're still going and then that's kind of it. I guess it makes you more, it, it creates more tension, but it could be a little overwhelming, you know? I don't know if I necessarily think it was a, a great move. I don't necessarily think it was terrible either. Oh, come on, dude. Okay, I gotta take this guy out before I can do this. There we go. No! No! Ah. Well, okay, I didn't die at least. Um, but yeah, that one's still pretty solid, does some interesting things, but FNAF 4 is like the line, right? I think the first three games were pretty solid, and he wanted to stop with FNAF 4. He wanted that to be the last game, um, or at least... At the very least... He wanted that to be the end of that story. Hence why he did Sister Location, which implied it was a spin-off, but then ended up just being, you know, I think because it didn't, it tied much, too much back into it, where they were like, it's not a Five Nights at Freddy's game, but then, yeah, actually it is. It's like, okay, it would have been interesting if you'd actually committed to it, but whatever. Um, but, Yeah, 4 sucks. 4 is a terrible game. Mainly because, again, those soft rules. It doesn't... It doesn't convey stimulus in a consistent or predictable way. I'm still... And it's also thematically very messy. Like, why are you going to check like, the idea is that you're a scared kid in his room. Why, if you were a scared kid in your room, would you go and check into the dark hallways next to your room that you're scared of? When I was a scared kid in my room, I would stay in my room with the door closed. I wouldn't go and look for the thing that was scaring me. 
And regardless, even if you're doing that, then I still, the fact it starts with a full screen of just like, here's how you play the game. I get it, they didn't want to have phone guy, right? Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, say, we'll say that's a requirement. You can't have phone guy. You have to do something else. You have to do, you can't just have a screen of instructions. Like, I play board games, and that is literally the biggest inherent detriment to board games, is that they're, the only way to teach them is with a rule book that has to be taught at the beginning of the game, right? Because the best way to teach any game is gradually through experience. Something that video games are uniquely able to do in a way that is incredibly satisfying when done correctly. Right? So the fact that Five Nights at Freddy's 4 squanders that ability is infuriating. And... Also, the way you're supposed to tell... I don't even remember the rule, because it's so ridiculous. It's like... If you... If you hear the breathing of the animatronics, which first off, animatronics don't breathe, but also this is like a kid's nightmare or whatever. You're supposed to close the door, but don't. If you do, but then like, why'd you open the door to begin with, right? Why not just keep the door closed, if that's the case? Second, I have watched that playthrough from various people many times. I've never once heard the breathing. Never, never once. Plus, it is really messed up to set people up to be listening very closely on headphones and then hit them with a loud noise. Like that is actually incredibly irresponsible, can damage people's hearing permanently doing that shit. So I do, I'm real upset that they made that a core mechanic of their game. That being said, At least it actually works, which FNAF World doesn't. So, you know, following up FNAF 4, which was the worst designed of them, with FNAF World, which was the worst programmed of them, it's not a great look. And then since it's all been like, remake stuff with lore thrown in, it's like, oh, it's in VR now, but it's basically the same game, or Pizzeria Simulator, which is basically just more of the same, it's, yeah, Security Breach is not great either, but I think that's mainly because it was so rushed. If they had had more time. But then again, that's the thing is, if they had more time, they could have made it, like, more polished. But the problems with it are just the core actual gameplay. The core gameplay loop of that is not super fun, you know? So, I don't think more time would have necessarily fixed that. It kind of would need to be redone from the ground up. Uh, I'm going to take a break. Then we are going to beat this guy, and then we are going to finish this game. So I will be our back in just a minute, so don't go anywhere. Don't touch the iron tile. Be our back.
Okay, I'm back. But, um... Yeah. Overall, it's like... Five Nights at Freddy's started very strong. And... Has just kind of limped along for a very long time because it was such a huge, groundbreaking success as a series, right? Like, it was game changing, but I don't think it necessarily should have gone on as long as it did. And I think the gameplay should have changed a lot more than it has, you know? And then, yeah, what, it, what have we come to with Security Breach? is them basically just trying to shoehorn this, the Five Nights at Freddy's mechanics into what is basically a boring, straightforward survival horror, the types of which Five Nights at Freddy's, ironically, was the thing to like bust us out of. Like We were all so bored with Amnesia clones and so many games that were just like Slender Slenderman clones. So, when... Five Nights at Freddy's, like, really turned everything on its head with a fresh new idea. The fact that, whatever, eight games later, it's just back to the same thing that we had before. It's it's pretty pretty sad, honestly. I I hoped more for the series, but whatever. Uh, ah, did you make all that noise? I can't think straight. I have so much work to do. Just work on letting me pass, little friend. Oh, big words, Tin Can. I'll show you a thing or two. Oh no. Wow, I got hit in his first form. Yeesh. Back you, you little sneaker. You little shit. Oops, whoop. Oh, hush. There's no, it's, this game is very old at this point. Also, it's not that much of a, it's pretty obvious they're not gonna have this be one of the late game bosses. This little guy running around. I remember this not being such a slow thing. Remember that first part being much faster. Oh, let me up. Let me up. Boing, boing. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding. Just gotta keep on going. Right. Up. Right, yeah, the big thing with this one is just remembering his patterns. Once you do that, you can get him into the loop. Ah, crap. I used to be able to do it seamless. It's been a long time. Suddenly, giant robots! I mean, is it really that giant? I guess these guys are pretty small. Although it's implied that Shovel Knight is a little guy. You know? Like, not as little as Tinker Knight, but still quite small. <laughs> ah. And that's the last of the Order of No Quarter. On to the finale. Do we do the... Save them! Boink, boink, boink. Nice try. Let's try pal. Uh, uh. Ooh, ooh. Oh, some good stuff. Good stuff. Ooh. Nice. Whoop. All right, what do we get? One last gastronomer. The Tower of Fate. I like uh, the little thing of having the blinking, the 
blinking icons for the stuff that you have collected to turn in, you know? This is good stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna use this up so I can get two reds. Then we're gonna, oh, right, turn in the gastronomer's meal ticket. Yeah, not a super long game, but pretty satisfying. It's certainly longer than the games it's emulating. So, nothing too bad there. Not what I meant to do. I'll check this hat. I swear there's like a... Like a... Boss fight, right? Oh, oh, I remember now. Gotta pay these guys off. Alright, I just need a little more gold. Ah, oh, damn. Uh, how do I get the gold? Uh, right! I can go do the uh, game at the other outpost. I could totally make enough money there. I only need, what, 71? So, let's finish her off. Mona! Mona, Mona! That's a hundred gold. Sometimes you just can't. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do much better than my first try at this. Only because I did this first when I was at the beginning of the game, so I hadn't quite gotten brushed up on uh, the controls yet. Yeah, look at that, I'm already at. I was already at. Not ah, crap. Oh, just shy of 200. Oh, telling me impressed. Oh, huh. I wonder if there's anything better than that. I don't think so. But I got the money I needed. And I got a music sheet, which I can sell for another 500. All right. Let's swing back out, do that boss fight, and then head to the end game. Boink. Boink. Ah, my precious hats! That's a lovely helmet. So lovely, so lovely. I must inquire, sir, about your curious collection. Travel the land far and wide, I do. Searching, learning, teaching, collecting all shapes, all sizes, hats. Each one I wear grants me a new power. Your hat looks powerful indeed. Intriguing, but uh, I'm rather attached to my helmet. Yes, yes, about that. Yeah. You got the sword hat. No thanks. No thanks. No thanks. Whoa. Oh! Tea hat. Saucy tea man. Boing. 
Uh, 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 uh. Oh, more of this. Just two hats. That's all you got. It sounded like you had a multitude of hats. Plus, you ain't even wear a hat. Enough, I know not what came over me. My hunger for hats to control your beautiful hat. It's a helmet. Right, oh, I knew that. Wear it in good health for now. Right, well, off I go then. Oh, let me see if I can get up there. Bom, 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 bom. No, I guess not. I remember being able to get up there at least once. Oh well. Away we go. It's the Tower of Fate. On dress. Justice. In spades. Whoops. See, this is pretty good. I like this end game a lot because it's like it's where you finally see everything coalesce. You know? Ooh, yeah. Right, Justice and Spades. So clever. Whoa. Oh, no. Okay. Ooh. Justice and Spades sounds like a sick heavy metal song. You know? Something like real Led Zeppelin, maybe. Boink. 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 I'm just taking my time. There we go. Oh no. Oh, what? I didn't even honestly see the spikes because they were just so obvious. There was like set decoration. I didn't even think of them as, like, an obstacle. They were so, like, obvious and easy to avoid. I guess that's something interesting. It played on my instincts as a gamer. Oh, yeah, that would have killed me if I didn't have the, uh... Zip Sam Zaru, you know? Son of a. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. I have not heard Wind Rose. Um. Though, if you're into that Ailstorm, that their Scottish pirate metal, those guys are awesome. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that stuff back. Ah, that always sucks when you lose it in just an awkward spot that you can't like recover. Because that. It, the way it's designed, it's like, there's always a chance, but no, sometimes there's no chance. I did so much better on this opening bit the first time. Whoops. I don't even remember what, I like bounced to that second platform. Oh, there I went. Well. Sucks to be him. Ah, I see. 
Oh, Yogg's Cast. Yogg's Cast is also a very drama-filled YouTube, but for very different reasons. They just, uh, they really got full of themselves, man. Like, I remember it was a big deal that, like, at the first Minecon, they were getting pissed off that they didn't have more attention. And they were tr claiming that it's like, nobody would even be into Minecraft if it wasn't for us and our uh, Let's Play. And it's like, that's not even remotely true. I didn't find them until way after I was already into Minecraft. And, like, their Let's Play series was cute, but it wasn't anything that mind-blowing. The idea of a narrative Let's Play was not new. And theirs was not even especially, like, well done. It was pretty sloppy, because it, it was actively just lying about what the game was. Like, that's the thing, is if anybody got into Minecraft because of Yogg's Cast, they'd probably be pretty disappointed, because it's nothing like what they set up. What they set up is fun, but it's, it's just not what Minecraft is like at all. Yeah, and I would say really any version of Diggy Diggy Hole that's any good is uh better than it has any right to be. Because <laughs> it was literally just something he came up with on the spot, off the top of his head, and it's real basic. Like, really, what's so funny about it is just, like, how confidently he just started doing it and then didn't have, like, an ending planned of any kind. Sometimes the laziest improv is the most effective. Um... Yeah, if, if you send it here, it's gonna... There aren't any hyperlinks allowed. Like, they're just completely off. But if you send it in my Discord server, I will see it. There's a spot for you to put music. There's a spot for people to put anything. I'm surprised that, like, I'm not even getting, like, people spamming it. Like, I have zero rules set up. I'm literally, like, obviously no... No bigotry allowed. But like, I, I literally, my whole server is open to just like, you know, self-promotion, whatever. So I'm real shocked that it's not happening more. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hold on, let me, okay, that's. That's how this goes, gotcha. <laughs> okay, dealt with. Ooh. Oh, no, no, no! Ah. Oh, man, that, that diamond is looking pretty nice. No. No, I shan't. Crush me. Ooh. 
Whoop. Okay. I don't trust this green knight over here. Let's, uh, let's hit him with some ball action. See how that goes. Ball. Ball. Ah. Let's try the anchor. Can I? Can I hit him? From Not quite. Let's try and keep moving. I'm trying to get it going at a steady clip at this point. This is certainly one of, if not the hardest level. I'm trying to. Ah, here was the other Kickstarter backer. They didn't get a secret boss, they just got these guys. Which is a cool idea. So I'm... I don't have a problem with it, but it's also like, it feels... Like, weirdly incohesive. Like, why do it... Why are the ninjas? Or, well, they're more like samurai. They're called, like, the liquid ninjas, but... They're clearly, like, samurai-inspired. Huh. Ooh, uh. Okay. Oh, come on, man! Oh, and I forgot to go buy my Icor. So I gotta survive this legit. Hey, what's up? The... Oh, I don't have enough magic. God damn it! Ah, oh, now he's gonna reset. This spot specifically, ugh, it's, it's tough, it's rough. Ha <laughs> ha I gotta swear to god if this is a, a trick. If this is just a bomb. Ugh. I'm supposed to use the uh down there, but I'm not gonna. Cause that sounds dangerous. I just wanna get through it. This is an any percent run after all. Up. Oh. oh come on, both. Rude. Oh. Oh, now it's this part. See, I knew it was coming. Uh, yeah, this specifically, I don't mind as much. The silhouettes, silhouettes are okay, and I like the, see, this is what I'm saying, it's the, like, intermittent flashing version that's, that pissed me off. This is okay. You know, and having, like, the, the signifier of the rain to show you, like, this part's real, this part isn't. That's nice. I like that. In comparison, a, oops, a much more traversable situation. Because really, when you think about it, when you're playing a platformer like this, you're already only looking at shapes, right? You're only really looking at the silhouette. 
Like, seeing the colors and stuff is helpful and instructive, but it's not a necessity. I just, yeah, really want to get through this. Son of a... Mm -mm -mm. Don't like those propeller guys. Not a fan. It's also, there's a lot of games that try and do like the retro, like a, a send up slash love letter of a retro game like this. And I don't think a lot of them are super successful. Mainly, I think, if, yeah, they're like missing the weird factor, right? Like, this one is Shovel Knight, which is a weird, silly idea in the way that a ton of NES games were. You know, a lot of them were bizarre and strange. Shovel Knight, stop your meddling and turn back now. This is your last chance. I will reach them, Black Knight, even if I have to go through you. Black Knight, are you guarding my tower? Have you finally decided to join us? You may kneel and pledge your loyalty now. For the last time, I answer to no one. Very well, here's a tiny test of power you spurned. Oh yeah, did I... even do the second... Black Knight! Yeah, exactly. It, it, it was just like such a weird landscape of like strange ideas that... were considered vaguely marketable to kids. I warned you to stay away! Get got. Get got. Whoa, he's doing the thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh jeez, he's doing the thing. The Riku do. In Kingdom Heart 2. Oh, Kingdom Heart 1. And Chain of Memory. Whoops. Uh. Whoa. And I've got to stream Chain of Memories sometime. I'd want to stream the original. Because, like, while, uh... The PS2 remake was pretty good. It's just, it's not the same, you know? It doesn't have all the the weirdness of being a Kingdom Hearts game on Game Boy Advance. This has gone far enough. Whatever you've been trying to do, you can't reach them. <coughs> uh, you may be right. They may already <coughs> be lost, but I can't let go of hope. But now surely you <coughs> see what I'm trying to save. I do. Do you know a way to bring them back? I haven't tried anything beyond words. Their magic is so powerful, I didn't have the courage. Go. Just don't hurt them. You don't have to answer to me. Wow. So powerful. So strong. All right, let's go get some high court and turn in this. Music. You know, they've done studies reading maps was more, er, they've done studies reading maps was more fun when we had our freedom. 
Now that I have this music sheet, I can perform it for you anytime. Just ask. I forgot what voice I gave him. Whatever. We're about at the end. Feed me Icor. Feed me all that juice. Give me the... Thanks, buddy. Fare thee well, shoveled knight. Return if thou hast need for my aid again. Ding, 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 ding. Tower of Fate, Ascent. Here we go. Although it says Ascent, but I'm going downwards. That's not an Ascent, you fools. Okay. Whoops. I guess I gotta be a little more... Okay. Uh, come on, man. Stupid. don't like an obstacle like that that's just just there to catch you if you're not paying close enough attention necessarily like if it was sneaky maybe but it's like it's just right there so it's very frustrating Well, I think I could gear across the lava, but I don't feel like it. That sounds like a lot of work. There we go. Shortcut. Just a little reward. Just a little reward for you for spending all the game, spending all the time doing all the stuff. Makes it a little easier. Though... Breath of the Wild did something like that too, right? Where if you beat all of the, uh... If you beat the Ancient Beast before you fight Ganon, it, like, takes stuff away, but it's like... If I beat all the beasts, clearly I'm good enough that I don't need that help so much. So, it seemed odd to me. I don't know, it feels like you would get the help at the beginning, but then that doesn't make sense story-wise, so it's... Yeah... I would say, also, the just in general, the like fight with Ganon is pretty underwhelming. As were the Ancient Beasts in general. They were just like super short. They were like the early dungeons in earlier Zeldas. You know? Would have liked something a little more meaty for that point in the game. Something good. Oh, well, okay. Yo, tell me if any of you guys remember these. Back in 2016, when I was still living in Washington, they had. I would go to Winco, which was kind of like. Kind of like Costco without a membership. It was like very warehousey. It was great. It was an awesome store. They would have like, you know, outlet style stuff. Um, and what they would have were Lime Freeze Rockstar Energy Drink. They also had like a, a Pina Colada, I think it was. That one was okay. But the, come on, dude. But the Lime Freeze ones were so tasty. Oh my god. It tasted like a freaking... Well, they tasted like Baja Blast, really. You know, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. They used to only be available at Taco Bell. Now, now you can get it in stores. 
Not all the time, I think, but it, they've released it often enough. And they have other varieties of it, but the classic is still the best one. Let's be frank. You can't beat a classic ha blast, you know? It's just, it's Mountain Dew with that added bit of lime. Ooh That's good eating, son. You get that in a cup with a little bit of ice and uh, chicken on quesadilla. Ooh, that's good eat. Though, I don't really do cheese anymore, so. Oh, I wanted to get that. Oh, well. Oh, come on, man! Whoo! I get it. It's a classic thing in gaming. Oh, the sudden death spikes. But, like, sudden death anything is so annoying. Full stop, man. Like, we figured this out in Dungeons & Dragons. You don't have sudden death stuff. You have an out of some kind. You know? <laughs> yes, got it. Although I'm reminded of uh, Mazes and Monsters. If any of y'all are familiar with that classic television movie. Starring a young Tom Hanks, interestingly enough. But it's about a guy, it was one of those like anti-D&D, satanic panic stories where it was like, this guy roleplayed and he lost his mind. He couldn't remember what was the game and what wasn't. And it's like, this is, do you think actors do that? I think it was funny because they had to have actors to play in the movie. And they, they know that it's like, that's not how this works. I don't know, I just thought that was silly. Uh, but there's a part in that where it's like, Yeah, I think the problem with American soda nowadays is that it's way too sweet. It's like double the sugar of what it used to be when I was a kid. It used to be literally like 20 grams per can of sugar, and now it's 40 plus, like, easily. It's ludicrously sweet. It's so bad. But yeah, in Mazes and Monsters, they're in a game. And he's just like, you see glittering at the bottom of the pit. And the guy is like, I jump down. How much gold do I receive? And the face the guy makes is just like that perfect DM face of like, mm. it's like, it was, it was gold encrusted spikes. You die so bad. Hello. Oh, right. I forgot about the boss rush. Hopefully I can remember the voices I gave all these guys. But here's the thing. In D&D, &D, even if he did that, he would get, like, an acrobatic saving roll to see if, like, as he's falling, he notices and, like, adjusts or something. You don't just kill somebody outright when they make a stupid mistake like that. Uh. Ha oh, ha, no, this, this is rich. Who let this peasant in here to spoil our sumptuous supper? Hardly a surprise that you've yet again set foot where you don't belong. We should <laughs> punish you. You're in deep now. We want a rematch. My new plans have no flaws. You can't win this time. A, a battle royale then, Marvelous. Who will go first? Here we go. I believe, yeah, any of them that were environmental before are like way easier this time around. Cause like, don't get all their environmental, like he doesn't get his ship or anything. Like he gets that much, but they, they're not gonna break the floor. Why ain't these bombs hurting those guys in the bay? Why ain't they, that hurting them in the bay? I believe I'm being very sloppy here, and I should probably be a little more careful. But it's okay, it was a checkpoint right outside.
Come on, man. There we go. Although, yeah, they do. Between. Though, one of the cool things is that because they feel they do it on the platter, it's up to you when you want to use it. So if you aren't too low health, you can save it for partway through that particular fight. Yo, wouldn't I just land on the table again? Wouldn't I just land on the table, though? Get him, get him. one more. Yeah, there we go. There we go. See, yeah, like right now, I don't have to get that turkey quite yet. But. Oh. Uh, give me the ball. The ball. Now I'm now I want the turkey. And I should have been using my sub items a lot more throughout this entire playthrough, frankly. Once again, it's dominant strategy. If the shovel works, then why waste my time with anything else? Oh, this is where you want to be. Back in here. Ooh, yeah, that's that feels good. Oh, we going we going down. We're yelling timber. was more clear those were mines until you got hit by one. It's not great conveyance. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Oh, I didn't even realize the platform's back. Yeah, I remember when I... Because that's the thing is, the three campaigns other than Shovel Knight, um, Shovel of Hope as they call it, were voted on in the Kickstarter. I remember I specifically voted for King Knight, I think it was King, Spectre, and Tinker Knight? No, I voted for, I voted for King, Spectre, or King, Tinker Knight, and the Enchantress. Get out of here. Come on, come on. There we go. No, not follow, not whisper. Ban. Ban. There we go. Yeah, account created four hours ago. Come on, dude. Speaking of bots, I mean, it wasn't a bot thing, but it was a s annoying scam thing. I've been applying to agencies, right? Because, like, I have one down in Tampa, but you're... You want to have one in different areas, because they really only cover the area they're in. I want to have at least one in L.A., one in New York, one in Chicago, and then some smaller ones, you know, around the country. Uh, Tampa being one of them, but... I was applying to more agencies, and I got a response from one, and I was like, cool. I was hoping, you know, to get something. It, it was in Burbank. So I was like, sweet, that's pretty close to, to LA, so that means that they probably can get me some LA work, which would be awesome. 
But, uh, yeah, they made it a requirement of signing on that you sign up for a specific service that, like, they would cast through, and it was a paid service. And I was like, that's... no. If you don't know, the golden rule with any kind of... any kind of representation like that, uh, is that... They, they do not charge you anything up front. They just take a percentage of anything that you get through them. You know, that way you're not just spending money you don't have and they are incentivized to get you work because when you get paid, they get paid. So it's like, this sounds suspicious, but it's different than just like paying you straight up, right? So I talked to, you know, my coach, one of my coaches, and I talked to my, uh, oh, I gotta do both still. I talked to, um, or, well, I, I just did some research. And, yeah, they're just a straight-up scam. Like, they had a different site before that they shut down because people were catching on. So it's just the same thing that they did before. The site's fake. The auditions are fake. They just collect that and don't actually give you anything. So, uh... It's called the Idiom Talent Agency. I don't know where it's actually located out of. It says California. But uh, yeah, they're a fake agency. The website Voice Cast Networks that they claim to use is, again, fake. It's the auditions on her fake. It is all just a ploy to trick you into paying them regularly for nothing. It's a full on scam. And it really annoys me because I was, I have been trying to find an agent and they're, you know, I'm not necessarily in, I, I have enough experience to know that it was not probably on the up and up to begin with. But yeah, knowing that there are probably some like newbie voice actors who could get tricked by that, that's incredibly infuriating. I'm very upset about that, so. That was annoying to deal with. Hmm. Give us a hand, Shovel Knight. You wouldn't leave us to hang here, would you? Oh, yeah, see you guys later. I, well, maybe I should. Mm, well, you were pretty big. Well, I'm a nice guy that, well... They did try to kill me. Mm, they didn't try that hard, though. Well, they did. The attempt is bad enough. Hmm. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> well, yeah, I'll help him out. But not you. Not the Tinker Knight. He's fine. The other guys helped him. I don't need to help every single guy. He's a tiny, the Polar Knight's giant. He wouldn't even need both hands. He'd just be like, whoop, you know? All right, selling my last couple sheet musics. Alright, and we're heading to the end of the game. And then I am going to go and make cookie dough. And then I'll make the cookies tomorrow. But, you know. I set up, I browned some butter, which need to re-solidify. Although, I think I kind of underbrowned it. It'll be, it'll be okay. It's not gonna be as toasty as I'd like, but I'm also gonna be using smoked, uh, smoked sea salt as a finisher. So I think it'll have plenty of, uh, those smoky notes. Ah, Ah, that sucks. 
and it fell under, so I think I'm just out of luck. Ah, oh, that sucks. But uh, yeah, I've got um, from an outlet store nearby that I've mentioned sometimes, Ollie's. I got some uh, chocolate, some cherry Andy, like Andy's mints, but they're cherry instead, so they taste just like cherry cordials. And I'm gonna chop some of those up. Yep, fishing's the way to go. Gonna chop those up and use those as chocolate chips. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Uh. Ugh, see, also this. It's like, it looks cool. It's also like, you basically have to just kind of... Eh. It's not really challenging, it's just kind of like... Uh, uh, uh. It's just like a lot of little start-stop fiddly bits. Ugh, and I gotta go through this first part again. Bruh. Okay. Okay. Gotta play it real slow and safe! God damn it! A little slippery. It's just a little slippery. Oh, does it not let me change? Oh, that sucks. Well, I'm just gonna have to deal, I guess. Whatever, it's the end of the game. I don't need money. I don't need monies. Man, I'm kind of hungry. Should've, I had like a smoothie that I made at the beginning of the stream, and it had like some protein powder in it, so it was kind of filling. Though, ugh, protein powder, which I got from that outlet store I was just talking about. Um, pretty gross. It's like. Okay, I gotta change my armor. Uh, it's like strawberry shortcake. It's like strawberry shortcake flavored. It's whey powder, but it doesn't have. It's like whey whey protein that's made from microflora, so it's actually like lactose and dairy free. Uh, what do I want? Yeah, we'll switch to this. Uh, but it tastes pretty gross. I prefer Way Forward, because that one is called Mooless. And the other one, it, there's like a cookies and cream flavor that's a little better, but it's like overall, it's pretty gross. And it doesn't feel great. But uh, there's, yeah, the one I prefer is Way Forward. W-H-E-Y forward from myprotein.com uh, which like literally it's it's like straight up like milk powder it's crazy <sighs> that was on me <coughs> 
despite having no milk in it. And they have some great flavors. I got like mint chocolate right now, but before I had like cinnamon cereal and it tasted exactly like the milk from a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch. That was pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it, I don't, I already don't really like strawberry for any kind of protein powder. Generally, I go with something chocolate that will like drown out the flavor of the protein. Ah, oh, come on. This part's so annoying. There should be a checkpoint after this specific part because it sucks. But, uh, yeah, in the case of the cinnamon cereal one, it does a pretty decent job. Um, yeah, especially in the smoothie I had, I don't know, something about the, the strawberry one had like a metallic taste to it that was really, really unpleasant. I didn't pay very much for it, so I'll probably just, frankly, get rid of the strawberry powder stick with the cookies and cream powder. I don't know. I'm curious because one of the reasons I don't do milk um, is because dairy makes my face break out. So I'm curious, like, even though it's made from microflora, it is still chemically identical to whey. So... Is that triggering it? Because well, my, I don't think my body will know the difference. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. God damn it! Ah, oh, this is so much harder. This part is ridiculous if you're getting knocked back, but the next part is ridiculous if you got a slip slide everywhere. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't looked that deep into it. It's a pretty common thing. The the thing, it's like sugar is most likely to do it. Then dairy, then gluten, which sucks because I do not want to go gluten free. Because like I don't eat meat or dairy. I can't give up fucking decent bread too. Like that's the last like bastion of comfort I have is, like, good, tasty carbs. No, I can't, yeah, I can't give up fucking gluten, man. Can't have sugar, meat, or dairy, and then on top of that, my bread has to be dry. Uh, like, I know, I know, gluten-free stuff has come a long way, so I'm sure it's okay, but it's just, I'm not, I can't, man, I can't give up bread. Bread? I love bread. I love good uh, egg on toast, you know? Or just toast in general. You can't make me do it! I won't do it! Which I also, like, I'm dubious about. Ugh, this is one of the leap of faith. Yeah. I'm dubious about the benefits of gluten-free diets to begin with. I hear great things from, like, my family. A lot of them have tried it and liked it or still are, like my sibling, Egan, who's been on the stream before, uh, is a fan. You know, has been gluten-free for a long time. But, like, I just... I like gluten too much. I like chewy, tasty breads. I used to love pizza, but now can't really do cheese. There are some vegan cheeses that are fine. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Okay, very different pose for the enchanter. It's a beautiful night, isn't it? 
shield knight. Come with me, let us leave this place. How pitiful clinging to false hope, chasing ghosts. So, have you come to slay me, knight, to avenge your beloved? Gaze into my eyes. See how fearful I am. Watch me cower as you draw your blade. I don't need a blade to fight evil, Shield Knight. I know you aren't lost forever. You haven't the slightest hope of defeating me, but I won't stop you from trying. So please, let us dance together into the abyss. Uh, hold on, what are you guys talking about before I get into that? Yeah, well, I have, I have heard that, like, it helps your digestion. You know, gluten can kind of bind up your digestion. Though, I would also say that in a lot of cases, that's because people who go gluten-free also end up eating more fiber as a result because they end up avoiding as much carbs as they were doing before. Like, as much red carbs. So, um, yeah, I think, I don't know how much of that is because they went gluten-free and how much of that is just because of the other changes in their diet. But, I don't know, I haven't seen the science on it. Frankly, if you don't have a celiac disease, you're probably fine to eat gluten. For the most part, though, yeah, if you have acne problems, and you cut out sugar, and you cut out dairy, and it's still too much for you, going gluten-free can't help. But... Yeah, it would be nice to have clear skin again. Because I didn't get acne until, like, my late 20s. I had pretty clear skin for, like, my entire teenagerdom and early adulthood. So it was, it's was it been very frustrating as an adult finally having to deal with, deal with that. Gotcha. You caught me. If only I had known, I would have come sooner. You knew I was still there. You know, it seemed helpless. You never give up on me. I will never give up on you. I'll follow you to the end of the world. It appears that maybe you have. It's happening. Oh no. When the amulet shared the magic within it was released. It's already gathering. It will escape and wreak havoc on everything. Unless we stop it. Unless we stop it. We can destroy it for good, here and now. We're both weak from battle. I've never been more ready. Come on, Shovel Knight. Let's fight together, like old times. Now, stay close to me. Hello? Yeah, this sequence is a great little uh, cap on the entire game, really. Quack. Whoop, point. Nope. Ah, oh, I messed it up. Ah, ah. There we go. I haven't got a kind of single dang hit. that for the right moment. Which is now. Uh, hold on. Anchor. Where is her hurt box, man? I have no idea. I would think her face, but I've hit it so many times and it's not doing anything. Is it like... Oh my god, it's literally her forehead. Specifically. Uh. 
Shield Knight. Shield Mate. Dots. Nope. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Oh, is that Shield Knight is like showing me where to do it? Where to go to be protected? That's that's clever. Ah, oh, come on! Seriously? That was baloney, dude. Okay, it brings me right back here at least. Concept of uh, the, the, what am I trying to say? Right, they have the body swap mode where you can choose whatever body for whatever character, and that's like so much work to put in for such a simple thing. But I really appreciate that they did it. You know, to to say to. The audience like hey you getting to affirm whatever you want these characters to be is important to us to the point that we will spend a great deal of money and time and effort you know on it that's awesome dude way to be an ally talk about a woke bay it's over shovel knight this place is falling apart we have to get out of here Ooh. Oh, crap. He's dead. Shield Knight! Black Knight, thank goodness you're here. Shovel Knight is on the wound to take them and get outside. No, can't leave you behind. How will you escape? This magic is too strong. I can't hold out much longer. Run. You can't deflect it. It'll tear you apart. I'm so happy I got to see you both one last time. Shield Knight! Go! Take Shovel Knight! Save them! Promise me you'll save them! Rip in peace. Whoa! Course and address! What sins will she commit? Pride more keep. Man, what a friggin' What a way to end this, to have that happen and then do all of this before we get closure on what actually happened at the end of the game. Let the celebrations begin!
the lichard. The life of the party. How's he doing that without breaking it on his dang sight? That's what I want to know. Okay, this... I uh, can go further, it just... I gotta... Put a little more juice on pulling it. Oh, he broke. He broke as hell. Motherfucking clocks. God damn. Advanced potion class. Oh. Moon Knight. Excavations and expeditions. Look at all that cash. Look at all that cash. Wandering travelers. Always ready for battle. Living the life carefree. Clockwork Tower. He's such a little guy. Toys for the children. Toys for the kids. Toys for the kids. Ooh, Ooh so, so, so old. Oh, he doesn't even get a subtitle. He's just hanging out. He dead. Shovel Knight's dead. Safe at last. I kept my promise, Shield Knight. Rest well, Shovel Knight, until we meet again. The double fake out, even. Now we get the whole credits before we get closure on that. Man. What a jerk move. <laughs> but it's fine. It's a good game. It gets a little difficult towards the end, as y'all saw. But it's a pretty great game. And it gets even better coming up. Because we're, yeah, we're going to keep going through the entire trove. Uh, next up being Plague of Shadows, which is not my favorite. I would say it's the weakest, just because it's exactly Shovel Knight again, just with a different character jammed in there, so it really shows how specific the, uh, the level design was to Shield or Shovel Knight's moveset, but it's not the worst. And then we get Spectre Knight where they reimagine it with like the same areas but totally different designs. And ooh, ooh baby, you wanna talk about good good movement systems? Ooh, we gonna be wickedy winterboard and we gonna be skateboarding. I'm so excited. But uh yeah, that'll be coming up on the next stream. Uh and then King of Cards, which I've always wanted to finish. But, uh, never had the opportunity. Because, uh, I, I've been busy. I don't really, s honestly, play games at all. Unless it's on stream. Though, yesterday, I did play a little bit of Cult of the Lamb. It was pretty fun. Because it's got the, uh... Plague Knight do get to fly around. If you know how to do that. I, I'm... I don't. I'm not very good at that part. But, uh, maybe I'll get good at it this time. We'll see. Um, trying to think. Oh, it's weird seeing a list of names like this not. No, it is alphabetized just by last name. Okay. And all Kickstarter backers, you made this happen. That's me! 
That was one of the Kickstarter backers. Oh, I like that. That just gives you the, the record. Wow. The physics engine is that old. Crazy. Ah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Let's see, Pride More Keep. Oh, I thought that was like my best time. Looks like Least Deaths and Pride More Keep. Right, yup, I like a lot, wow. Oof, and then the final one. 102, I could get that under 100, easy. I was not like that keyed in, but yeah, five hours. Sounds about right. I could totally do under five hours. 80% item. I've 100%ed it before, so. At least I'm pretty sure I have. Thank you for playing. Thank you for making. Yacht Club games, they're pretty good. It's pretty dang good. And then here we go, some closure. Ah, uh, here come Shield Knight, limping in. Yes, snuggled by the fire. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Ooh, there it is. Ooh, that swirly cursive font. The end. Ah, a solid, solid experience. All right, that's gonna be it for me tonight. But uh, yeah, we will be back next Friday to dig into Plague of Shadows and continue the Shovel Knight situation. I got a couple other ideas for streams I might do during the week. So please be sure to follow so you get notified when those happen. But uh, yeah, let's see who there is to read over to right now. Um, do -ba -do -ba -do. In fact, let me just scooch over to my end screen. Ding, dong. There we go. While I find Serena Vapor Bobble. Noreen Serene. It's been a while. Yeah, let's read Noreen. I like Noreen a lot. I think you will too. Let's see that that actually worked. There we go. It's been pretty consistent lately, so that's good. All right. Let her know I sent you. Have a great weekend. I'll see y'all next Friday, everybody. Okay, goodbye. Good night.